Yo, what's up guys? It's Noah here. Uh, and in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the NBA slate on DraftKings and Yahoo for Monday, uh, March the 21st. Um, hope you guys had a good weekend. We're back to talk through some NBA for today for Monday slate nine gamer. Um, so as always, guys, we're going to talk through each one of these nine games. We're going to break down each team, kind of give my early thoughts, what I do like, taking a first look at the slate um, on Sunday night. And then as we do go through each game, we will build out an early core, just talk through five players uh, that specifically stand out to me at first look on both uh, DraftKings and Yahoo. But before we do get started with the breakdown, please do guys hit the like button down below. Always do appreciate the likes. If you're new to the channel and you have not yet, hit that subscribe button as well. Uh, we are on the road to 25,000 subscribers and we're about 40 subscribers away. Um, so we should hit the milestone very, very soon. If you're new and you have not yet, hit that subscribe button. And also, uh, go check out the sponsor of this video, Price Picks. So Price Picks is a player prop based DFS site where you're just picking the over or the under on players projections. Um, basically, you know, betting player props. And it's very simple. Um, you just make a selection whether you think a player goes over or under their projection. You have to make at least two picks, but you can make up to five picks and you can win up to 10 extra money on Price Picks. They offer a lot of different uh, categories you can um, bet on points, props, player or points, props, rebounds, assists, Points, rebounds, assists add up together. Three pointers made. Um, they have double double now, so you can you know take over or under if you think a guy's going to double double. They'll add their fancy point projections too. And if you have access uh, to fancy point projections yourself, or if you make your own projections, you can compare yours to Price Picks and kind of make your decisions that way. Uh, there's going to be a lot of options. Um, as we do get closer to tip off Monday night, you'll see their full board posted. They'll have all those player or basically every player prop for every team. Um, just about every player that you know expects to play meaningful minutes so if you want to go bet on uh, prize picks you want to take some action in over there sign up and use code NOAH uh, they'll match your first deposit up to $100 when you do sign up with my promo code and again you can take a look at their board make some picks for yourself they offer a lot of sports outside of NBA so if you like to dabble into other things other than NBA they offer plenty of other sports as well um, college basketball is you know going on right now it's the March Madness tournament they have college basketball props you can bet on if you want to you know take a look at those Lots, lots available on prize picks, so definitely sign up over there if you have not yet. Use code NOAH when you sign up, and they'll match your first deposit up to $100. Uh, but let's take a look at Monday's nine-game slate, guys. It's a, uh, it's definitely an interesting slate because there are a lot of teams on back-to-backs today, and there's kind of, there's going to be a lot up in the air right now. Um, there's a lot of guys that are questionable. Um, some guys that didn't play Sunday that will have to kind of wait and see if they play Monday. Uh, but again, we'll talk through each game. We'll start off with the Pelicans and Hornets game, and this is one that I do have a good amount of interest in, you know, right out of the gate. So. Both these teams are you know, pretty fast paced so far this year. Uh, the Hornets are playing at the third fastest pace in the league. Pelicans, on the other hand, they're not as fast paced. Um, they're you know about middle of the pack, closer towards the bottom. But it's definitely a big time pace up spot for the uh, Pelicans going up against the Hornets. Defensively, neither one of these teams are good defensively on the season. Um, the Hornets, in terms of defensive rating, let's see where they rank. Uh, they rank 23rd in defensive rating, and the Pelicans are about middle of the pack. They're 17th. I think we get you know a pretty good game here, a game that is definitely going to be worth targeting. It should stay close. It should be um, high scoring as well. And on the Pelican side, I think CJ McCollum at 9,200 looks like a pretty good option here. Um, now, again, we're going to have to pay attention to news on Brandon Ingram. So Ingram was out for Sunday. It looks like he didn't travel for Friday's game over the Spurs, and he'll miss seventh consecutive game Sunday when the Pelicans head to Atlanta. So he didn't play Sunday in Atlanta. We don't really have any update yet on Brandon Ingram's status for Monday's game. I'm guessing that Ingram remains out. I mean, Ingram's been out for about two weeks now, and we, we really haven't gotten, like, any clarity of whether or not he's going to be close or any time. Like, we don't know if he's even close to returning. I'm just going to expect Brendan, uh, Brendan Ingram to remain out, and if Ingram is still out, I think CJ McCollum's a really good option today. 9200 on DraftKings is just too cheap, in my opinion, especially for this matchup. And $39 on Yahoo, he looks really good over there as well. You know, ever since Brendan Ingram has been injured, you know, for like over the last like five or six games, I mean, we've seen, we've seen CJ McCollum just have a massive role, playing big minutes every night, um, played 39 minutes against Atlanta on a Sunday night. He didn't even have that great of a game. Like, he had a mediocre game, and he still scored 44 drafting points. He had a pretty bad shooting game, shot 34% from the field, 9 for 26. You know, if McCollum has an even, you know, half... Half a better shooting game on Sunday. He's probably going for 50-plus drafting points. Um, you know, a lot of these games as well have been blowouts. Like, the, the San Antonio game was a blowout. I think the Phoenix game, he didn't play much in the fourth quarter. But Orlando, close game, 38 minutes, almost 50 drafting points against Memphis. That was a blowout, and he still scored 58 drafting points in 31 minutes. He just gets so much usage without Ingram. I'm um, going to have the bonus hands a ton as well. At 9,200, especially given this matchup against the Hornets, I like CJ McCollum quite a bit today, assuming that Brendan Ingram remains out. Now, if Ingram winds up playing... I'll definitely bump down McCollum. I might not be as high on him then. Uh, but for now, I'm just expecting Ingram, Ingram to remain out. 
And then J-Val is someone I like quite a bit too. Now, this is a fantastic matchup for J-Val. We've seen the Hornets get killed by bigs this season, especially guys like J-Val that can dominate in the paint, um, can really dominate on the glass. The Hornets have been a pretty bad rebounding team. Um, they also give up a lot of fancy points to opposing centers. They give up a lot of rebounds to opposing centers. It's just a really good matchup in general. Um, and we know J-Val's got massive upside. We saw that Sunday against Atlanta, put up 50 drafting points in 33 minutes. His usage takes a nice bump without Ingram as well. Um, we should expect the usage on this team to be dominated by J-Val and, and, and CJ McCollum while Ingram remains out. So I really like J-Val too. I think you know if you want to play J-Val and CJ together, I have no issues with that because I think both these guys have a lot of upside in this matchup. And then on Yahoo, I really like J-Val over there. He's very affordable, only $29. Um, at first look, he's one of my favorite center plays on the slate. Love the matchup, and I think the upside is definitely there against this Charlotte team. Uh, Devontae Graham was questionable Sunday. He did not play. I'm guessing that Devontae Graham plays today, but this will definitely be something worth monitoring. If, if Graham sits, that just makes McCollum look even better, and then that would probably bring a guy like to Jose Alvarado into play. Alvarado off the bench Sunday, played 24 minutes, was really productive, had 31 drafting points. He's been productive when he's gotten minutes, and you would have to think if Graham remains out, we'd probably see similar minutes for Alvarado, you know, somewhere between 24 to 25, you know, maybe mid to high 20s. At 4,600, I would have some interest in Alvarado if Graham remains out. The rest of the Pelicans, though, I'm not super high on. Um, Jackson Hayes had a pretty good game on Sunday, 31 DK points in 38 minutes. His minutes have been pretty secured lately. Uh, played 28 in a blowout against San Antonio, but got up to 38 on Sunday against Atlanta. You know, I think if Graham winds up sitting, that just makes me feel a little bit better about Jackson Hayes. I think that's just, you know, one having one less guy in the rotation just, you know, makes the minutes more secure for all these other starters. And then Najee Marshall did start on Sunday. Um, he wasn't great, though, and I think at 5,500, he's not really going to be someone I target even if he starts again. Really, I'm interested in McCollum, J-Val, and then, you know, maybe Alvarado if Graham is out again. And that's really it from the Pelicans. Now, on the other side with Charlotte... I think these Charlotte guys are pretty appealing just because, you know, this game should stay close and these guys do play a ton of minutes in close games. You know, we've seen LaMelo's minutes get um, back up lately. Only played 30 last game against Dallas, but that was a blowout. Um, the game against Atlanta, though, that did stay close, we actually got 36 minutes from LaMelo. And we haven't seen LaMelo get, you know, 35, 36 minutes lately. But I think if this game stays close, we can expect close to 35, 36 minutes from LaMelo. We know he offers a lot of upside. He can stuff the stat sheet, can do a little bit of everything. At 8,800, I do have some interest in LaMelo today. I think same could be said for Rozier and Bridges. Both these guys are going to play you know, really, really big minutes if it's a close game, 36 to 40 minutes for both Rozier and Bridges. They offer plenty of upside as well. Um, I still think LaMelo is my favorite just because I think his ceiling is the highest of all these guys. But Miles Bridges had a really good game last game in only 30 minutes, pl uh, put up 44 DK points. No issue going to Miles Bridges at 8K. Um, he had a really big game against the Pelicans earlier this season for what it's worth. Um, almost had a triple-double. Don't think, you know, Miles Bridges is that bad of a play either. The big three from the Charlotte, um, all three of these guys are viable. I just think LaMelo is probably my favorite of the three. And then the rest of the Hornets, I'm not super high on anyone else. You know, P.J. Washington is going to start, probably play 25 to 30 minutes. At 5,200, he's a playable option. Um, Montrezl Harrell and Mason Plumlee, they're going to split the center minutes. You never know who's going to have the big game between the two. You never know how the minutes are going to be split. In this matchup against J-Val, like I would think Plumlee might match up better. Um, I don't know if they want Harold out there against J-Val. I think Harold could definitely get you know abused on the defensive end. But you know these guys offer upside. They're both pretty good point-per-minute players. It's just that you never really know how they're going to get the minutes. Some nights it could be 30 for Plumlee and 18 for Harold. Some nights it could be 28 for Harold and 20 for Plumlee. Um, if you want to take a shot at one of the two, I don't hate it, but... That's really it from Charlotte. I definitely think, you know, on this team, I'm really looking to the main three guys, LaMelo, Rogier, Bridges, and for sure LaMelo, probably my favorite play from uh, the Hornets in general. But next game, the Lakers and the Cavs. So the Lakers, for me, it's going to come down to if LeBron plays or not. That's going to really determine my interest in this team. If LeBron plays, I don't really have much interest in anyone outside of LeBron. I think LeBron on this slate would just kind of be a contrarian option. Tougher matchup against a good Cavs defense, but obviously, you know, there's a little bit of a narrative here. LeBron going back to Cleveland. Anytime he gets to play Cleveland in Cleveland, you know the crowd's always going to get hyped up. Um, obviously, LeBron has done so much for Cleveland. So I think LeBron wants to play here. I expect him to play. He's a fine play on this uh, slate, but there are other stud options and better matchups that I'd rather target. If LeBron by some chance does not play, then obviously, you know, Russell Westbrook, Malik Monk, Carmelo Anthony, these, these guys would all get bump, uh, bumps up. I think Westbrook, you know, his ceiling would definitely be higher if LeBron does wind up sitting. We've actually seen Westbrook be a lot better these last few games. He's been stuffing the stat sheet, had a triple-double against Toronto um, in that game. Again, for 9K, I'm not really high on Westbrook today, but by some chance, if LeBron sits, that would definitely change my thoughts on Westbrook, and he would look a lot more appealing. 
But for now, expecting LeBron to play, he's really the only guy I'm interested in from the Lakers. And even, you know, LeBron on this slate, I think, is just kind of a contrarian option. And then on the Cleveland side, so it's a really good matchup here for Cleveland. Lakers defense has been just bad this season. They've been playing pretty fast as well. I think Darius Garland offers plenty of upside here. Now, 9,300 on this slate, I think that's an appropriate price tag. But, you know, we've seen Garland in close games lately. He's playing just massive minutes, 38 to 40 minutes. I would think the Lakers can keep this game close to where Garland does play his full minutes. Um, so I definitely think, you know, 40 minutes from Darius Garland. Wouldn't be surprised if he puts up 50, 55 DK points here. Definitely think he's in play as a tournament option. I think the same could be said for Evan Mobley. We know Evan Mobley is going to play uh, big minutes in a close game. And especially right now with the Lakers, with how they play small ball, you know, playing LeBron at the five, we've seen bigs be able to really kill the Lakers. Um, and I think Evan Mobley could definitely have a big game here um, with the Lakers going small. I think he could really dominate on the glass, could definitely get a lot of points in the paint. Him and, him and Garland, I think, are both appealing tournament options. Now, the rest of Cleveland, don't see much interest in anyone else on this team. I think it's really just those two guys, Garland and Mobley, not really going to look to anyone else. So let's go ahead and move on to the next game, Portland and Detroit. So Portland, uh, they're on a back-to-back -back today. We'll definitely have to pay attention to the injury report for Portland. Uh, Anthony Simons, we don't really have any update on him. Uh, about two weeks ago, it was announced that he would be out for um, one to two weeks. I don't think he's placed today. I haven't really seen any um, update that he's going to be close to returning. But right now, DraftKings has him listed as questionable. I think Simons will remain out, though. Uh, Winslow did not play Sunday, just as Winslow. So we'll have to see if he plays. I'm guessing that they held him out just so that he could play here. Um, but, you know, that'll be something worth monitoring. And then Eric Bledsoe, uh, he was out Sunday, has yet to play with the Blazers. I doubt he plays today. I haven't really seen any update on Bledsoe either. So expecting all these guys, maybe Winslow plays, but expecting Simons to be out, expecting uh, Bledsoe to be out. You know, Josh Hart on the back-to-back, -back, um, assuming he plays today, I think it's a pretty solid option at 8K. You know, Josh Hart's a guy that I've kind of been avoiding at these high price tags. But this is a game that we should expect to stay close. Um, against Detroit, you would have to think the Blazers, I mean, the Blazers right now, their roster with, with all the injuries, like they might be the worst team in the NBA, um, no joke. Without Nurkic, without Dane, without Simons, like this team is just so, so bad. But against against Detroit, like you would have to think Portland can keep this game close. If they do keep it close, we know Josh Hart's going to have a big role. He's going to play big minutes. Um, they got blown out on Sunday against Indiana. Hart still put up 40 drafting points in only 30 minutes. He didn't even play in the fourth quarter. I mean, if he can get his full run today, I definitely have interest in Josh Hart, and I think Portland can keep this game close. I just don't think Detroit's good enough to blow anyone out at this point. The rest of Portland, though, like Watford, Williams, Eubanks, none of these guys stand out at their price points. Um, if, Win if Winslow winds up playing, that'll just take the minutes, uh, take some minutes away from those guys. So, really, I think for me from Portland, I'm just kind of looking at Josh Hart as a you know as a solid pay up uh, pay up option. Just gotta hope that Portland can keep the game close to where he does play his full minutes. And in the games that you know Hart has played his full minutes, we've seen him be really good. So I'm kind of interested in Josh Hart on the Portland or on the other side though with Detroit. Uh, so kind of important injuries to watch today. Jer uh, Jeremy Grant is out for Detroit, and there's also a lot of questionables. Uh, Corey Joseph, Kelly Olynyk, and Killian Hayes. I believe all three of those guys are questionable. Um, or Killian Hayes is actually probable, but I believe Joseph and Olynyk are questionable. So this is definitely important. Um, obviously, Corey Joseph, if he were to sit. That would open up more minutes in the um, in the backcourt. You know, maybe Cade, his minute ceiling would probably be even higher. You would see more minutes for Killian Hayes. Maybe Saban Lee plays some more, um, assuming he's with the team right now. I think he is. But then the other side with Kelly Olynyk. So without Jeremy Grant, um, they're already missing you know one of their power forwards. If Kelly Olynyk winds up sitting too, I mean we could expect pretty big minutes for Sadiq Bay. Pretty big minutes for Marvin Bagley. Um, you would probably think a guy like maybe Isaiah Livers plays more off the bench. I don't think he'd really be viable for DFS. But I would feel really good about a guy like Marvin Bagley. I think Marvin Bagley is probably my favorite play from this Detroit team in general, just when you you know look at pricing and points per dollar wise. With Jeremy Grant out today, I am expecting Marvin Bagley to start at the four. Um, I think last time Jeremy Grant was out, he did start at the four. So anytime Marvin Bagley is going to get you know 30 plus minutes, he's always appealing. Um, I believe that Orlando game he did start, if I remember correctly, I think Grant was out that game. And we saw Marvin Bagley play really well, uh, put up 42 DK points in 32 minutes. This matchup against Portland, I mean, really, really good. Portland's defense has been terrible. They've been one of the worst defensive teams in the league. I think at 5,900, Marvin Bagley looks really appealing today, expecting him to start in place of Jeremy Grant. Like him quite a bit on both sides. On Yahoo, uh, he's uh, $18 over there. I think Marvin Bagley looks like a very solid power forward option on Yahoo. And then the other guys, you know, Kay Cunningham and Sadiq, uh, Sadiq Bay. I haven't been really rostering these guys lately, but I think without Jeremy Grant, the upside for both Cunningham and Bay is definitely higher. We saw Kay Cunningham play really well last game in his return from injury. Uh, played 36 minutes against Cleveland, had 43 draftings points. I mean, Cade's been really good. He's been stuffing the statue. He's been doing everything, scoring, getting rebounds, getting assists. 
he's legit got triple double upside. I mean, against the Clippers, he only had or only was one rebound shy of a triple double that game. Even at 8,400, like with how good this matchup is, I think Cade's got 50 plus point upside here, especially without Jeremy Grant. So he's in play for me. Sadiq Bay, we've seen play really well the last two games. He obviously went nuclear. Uh, that game against Orlando, whenever Grant and Cade were both out, had a career high 51 points, uh, 78 draftings points. Even last game, uh, 40 draftings points from Sadiq Bay. He's been taking a lot of shots lately. His usage has been pretty good. Um, he's been getting rebounds too. Price tags come up to 7,100, but I definitely think without Jeremy Grant, there's plenty of upside available for Sadiq Bay. Um, so him and Cade, I think both look solid. Now the rest of uh, Detroit, I don't know if there's anyone else I'm going to consider on this team. Um, Isaiah Stewart, like I don't know if his role really changes without Grant. Maybe the minutes become a little bit more secure, but um, at 5,100, he doesn't stand out. I think that's probably it. I think that's really everything I'm targeting here. Definitely the main three guys like Cade, uh, Sadiq Bay, Marvin Bagley. Those three guys all do stand out from this Detroit team. Um, but let's move on to the next game, Utah and Brooklyn. So on Utah, uh, they are on a back-to-back -to -back today, so we'll definitely have to pay attention to the injury report from Utah. Uh, Mike Conley was out for rest on Sunday. Um, I'm guessing that he will play today, just given there was a back-to-back. -back. Um, I'd expect like Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert to play, but you know it's a back-to-back. -back. Monitor the injury report. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, though, at 9K, I don't think really stands out on this slate. Um, he did have a big game against the Knicks on Sunday, but I think a lot of that might have had to do with uh, with Mike Conley being out. Now that Mike Conley's coming back, like I think that caps Mitchell's ceiling a little bit. Um, we still see Mitchell have big games, especially without Bojan, um, and I think Bojan will probably be out once again. Uh, he's been out, I believe, the last few games due to injury. Don't really have any update on him yet, so um, we'll have to monitor that. If he winds up sitting, you know, that... That makes the ceiling a little bit higher for Donovan Mitchell, but I think with Conley expected to return, not super high on Mitchell at 9K. I think Rudy Gobert, though, looks pretty appealing. Really like this matchup against Brooklyn and going up against Andre Drummond. I mean, Drummond, he has never been a good defender, and he's a guy that you can definitely beat down low. And I think this is one of those spots where we could see a big, you know, 2020 type of game from Rudy Gobert. We know Gobert gets a lot of points in the paint. He really dominates on the glass. And against this Brooklyn team, you know, you can beat them down low. You can beat them in the glass. They're not a great rebounding team either. Um, I think Drummond um, should probably get abused here by Gobert. I think Gobert is definitely in play for me at the center position. 7,800, I do like Gobert today. Um, probably my favorite play from Utah in general. Jordan Clarkson, though, with you know Conley coming back, not super high on him. NAW started on Sunday, but I think that was just due to Conley being out with Conley playing today, not really high on NAW. So, yeah, I think that's it for Utah. Um, yeah, Rudy Gay's been playing well off the bench the last few games. Maybe if Bojan remains out, we could maybe go to Rudy Gay. Uh, he played 23 minutes against the Clippers, and I think he played like 25 minutes Sunday against the Knicks. Had a pretty good game Sunday. Maybe if Bojan sits, we could consider Rudy Gay, but there's not a ton that I love from Utah today. I think Rudy Gobert is my favorite play here. Assuming that Conley returns, I'm not super high on Mitchell, Clarkson, NAW, any of the other guards. So let's move on to the other side of this game with Brooklyn. And Brooklyn... They are a team I do have some interest in today. I don't love the matchup against Utah, but I will mention that you know Utah's defense this season, they haven't been nearly as good defensively as they have been in previous seasons. So you know, the matchup against Utah isn't as bad as you would think. Kevin Durant here, um, he should dominate the usage once again. You know, Last game against Portland without Kyrie, uh, didn't have the best game. 53 drafting points was a little underwhelming, but he still scored 30, uh, 38 points, uh, played 38 minutes. I mean, without Kyrie, with no, Hard not on the team, with Ben Simmons not playing right now, it's just Kevin Durant is going to dominate the usage. Um, again, against Utah, probably going to see a lot of Royce O'Neal, who's a good defender, but KD is matchup proof, and he should just have massive usage here. So no issues with KD as a payup option. I think he's you know firmly in play today. But the secondary guys from Brooklyn, um, you know, Bruce Brown at 6K, I don't love at this price tag. I think he's priced appropriately for what his ceiling is, but he's been really, really good lately. He's been very consistent. 33-plus uh, draftings points now in four straight games. He's played at least 32 minutes in four straight games. It seems like in competitive games, they're going to give Bruce Brown 35, 36 minutes. So, you know, at 6K, he's playable. Drummond, I mean, going up against Gobert, don't love that matchup, but you would think they're going to need someone with size out there to guard Gobert. So I would assume that Drummond probably plays like 24, 25 minutes here. We know Drummond's a good point-per-minute player. Um, even if he struggles on the defensive end against Gobert, you know, he probably will be able to do enough uh, in the stat sheet to, to be worth his salary. So if we get like 25 minutes from Drummond, there's plenty of upside for him, even in a tougher matchup. But I think Seth Curry and Gordon Dragic, these two guys both look appealing. Seth Curry's 5,600 on DK. I kind of like him at that price point. Dragic is 5,300. I uh, kind of like him as well. And then on Yahoo, I think both these guys look appealing. Um, if you look at the salaries on Yahoo, only $19 for Curry at the shooting guard position. Goran Dragic, really, really cheap on Yahoo. He's only $14. I think he definitely stands out as one of the better values uh, over on Yahoo, just kind of at first look. So, so last game without Kyrie, 
38 minutes for Seth Curry, uh, 40 DraftKings points. He took 14 shots. He did shoot the ball really, really well. He shot seven for 11 from three, uh, shot 60% from the field. I don't know if we can expect 60% from the field to continue. Like, I don't know if we can expect him to continue to shoot that well, but the minutes are definitely going to be there. I mean, without Kyrie, they seem content on playing Seth Curry, Goran Dragic, KD, you know, 35, 40 minutes. Last game, you got 38 minutes from Seth Curry. You got 36 minutes from Goran Dragic. And the last few games without Kyrie uh, against Portland, Dragic played 36 minutes against Dallas. Dragic played 36 minutes. And against the Knicks, when Kyrie was out, he played 38 minutes. So Dragic has played basically 35 to 40 minutes in the games without Kyrie. You know, Dragic normally has been a pretty good point per minute player. I will say that you know, playing with KD, I don't know if his ceiling is as high. Um, he hasn't been taking a ton of shots. He only took seven shots last game, but he was able to get 10 assists. He's always been a good facilitator. The minutes, though, that's the thing for me. I mean, 36 minutes last game without Kyrie, 36 the game before that. The minutes seem very secure right now for Dragic. And at 5,300, if he's playing 36 minutes, I think he has enough upside to, to pay off this price tag. So I think Seth Curry and Goran Dragic both kind of look appealing. The rest of Brooklyn I'm not really interested in, though. I think we can go ahead and move on to the next game. Uh, Miami and Philadelphia. So this is a game that should be fun to watch. But for DFS, I don't think this is one I'm going to be super high on just because these are two good defensive teams. These are also two very slow paced teams. I think this game should be fairly low scoring. On the Miami side, we will need to monitor the status of Jimmy Butler, who is currently questionable. I would think in a big time game like this against Philadelphia, like Jimmy probably tries to play here. It's a revenge game as well. Um, he sat out last game, but that was against OKC. Like, that was a game that, you know, they didn't really need Jimmy to play in. So, I think Jimmy will play. And if he does, I just don't see much here for Miami. Because when everyone's healthy on Miami, they're not a team that I really love to get exposure to. Because everyone's kind of priced where they should be. The matchup's not great either. You know, if Jimmy winds up sitting again, then obviously, Bam, Heary, uh, Hero, Lowry, they all become more appealing. Still think at their salaries, none of them would stand out as great options today. But they would be playable. But I think if Jimmy's in, like, I might just full fade Miami here. They're not a team I'm super high on. Um, they're not a team I have a ton of interest in today. Maybe if Jimmy sits, then we can look to get some exposure to Bam and Hero and Lowry. And then the value guys, might, maybe Kayla Martin, if he plays, could be viable. Max Drews. Um, we'll mention that Gabe Vincent is out. So, like, if Gabe Vincent sits, if Kayla Martin sits, and if Jimmy Butler sits, I mean, that those are a lot of minutes that are kind of freed up. I think Max Drews would play a lot. So, like, if Jimmy, Martin are both out. I actually would like Max Struess a lot because I think Max Struess will be forced into playing big minutes without Martin and without Jimmy and with Vincent out too. So kind of pay attention to that. But right now, if everyone plays, if the questionable guys play for Miami, don't see much I like here. And then on the Philadelphia side, so Philadelphia is on a back-to-back. -back. Anytime they're on a back-to-back, -back, you always have to worry about potential rest. Um, Joel Embiid's been on the injury report lately and it's a back-to-back. -back, so I definitely think there's a non-zero chance that Embiid winds up sitting today. For now, just kind of expect him to play. But if he winds up sitting, that would obviously change the whole slate. Um, it would make J James Harden look like a great play. Definitely would make Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey look a lot more appealing. DeAndre Jordan would obviously become a value option. But if everyone is in for Philadelphia, not much I like here. It's a really tough matchup against Miami. Again, this is a game that I think will be very low scoring, should be played at a slow pace. I don't really see much on Philadelphia I'm targeting today. Even Embiid and Harden in this matchup against the Heat, like I'm not super high on either one of them. So I think for me, I'm just kind of full fading this game. If guys start getting ruled out here, then that will definitely change my thoughts. But for now, don't love anything in the Miami-Philadelphia game. Let's move on to the next one, Toronto and Chicago. So on Toronto today, uh, Fred Van Vliet, he was out on Sunday, but he is expected to play for today's game. So with Fred, uh, Van Vliet expected to play, we kind of know, you know what kind of roles we're going to get from Siakam, Scotty Barnes, Van Vliet, and Gary Trent. If it's a close game, which it should be, um, we should expect 36 to 40 minutes from all four of Siakam, Barnes, Van Vliet, Trent. At their price tags, do any of them stand out as like priority plays today? I don't think so, but these are guys I definitely wouldn't mind sprinkling into some of my lineups. I think Siakam is my favorite play from Toronto just because the matchup is so good against the Bulls. Uh, the Bulls have been, uh, been allowing a lot of points in the paint. Vucevic individually has never been a great defender. So I think this is a, it, this is a matchup that Siakam can definitely have a lot of success in. Um, so 8,900, I'm kind of interested in Siakam today. Scotty Barnes at 8,100. I know he's been playing really well lately, but he's probably my least favorite of the Toronto guys. I think that price tag is just a little bit too high. Van Vliet at 7,900, have no issues going to. He should play 36 to 40 minutes if this is a close game. Um, I think he's priced where he should be, but it's definitely viable. Gary Trent, probably my you know third favorite Raptor. I would probably rank the Raptors. Siakam number one, then, then Van Vliet, then Trent, then Scotty Barnes, just when you factor in price tag. But Siakam, definitely my favorite play here. Then the rest of the Raptors, we'll have to pay attention to the starting lineup. So on Sunday, they started Presta Chua and Kim Birch. 
Obviously, with Van Vliet back, he's going to go back to the starting lineup. But do they start Achua? Do they start Burge? If they start Achua, I'd be interested in Achua because we have seen him be productive when he does get minutes. Um, and he did play decent in the minutes so far that he's played on Sunday. So, like, if Achua starts, kind of interested in him. If Burge starts, though, I'm not going to go there. He just hasn't been a productive player even when he's gotten minutes. So that's really it from Toronto. Now, the, on the other side of this game with the Bulls, not a team I have much interest in here. Yeah, the price tags on all the main Bulls guys have come down a little bit. DeRozan's only 8,700. Vooch is only 7,800. Levine's only 7,600. But I think these are appropriate price tags. You know, when all three of these guys are healthy, they're going to all, like, kind of split the usage. It's always tough to predict which one of the three is going to have the big game. Um, don't love the matchup either against the Raptors. So, like, I think these three guys are playable because they all could put up you know one of them probably could put up a big game here it's really unlikely though that like two of the three or all three of them have a big game so if you're going to play one of the bulls guys i think you kind of just choose one of the three my favorite would probably be vooch at 7800 just because i think at that price tag like vooch kind of looks the most appealing um he's done well against toronto this season but not loving much from the bulls today they're not a team i'm super high on so let's move on uh, to the next game, I think we got three more to go over. I'm going to try and go through these pretty quickly because I know this video has been pretty long already. Um, but Washington and Houston, so on the Washington side, uh, Kyle Kuzma, he was out on Saturday, but he should be back for today's expected to play. With Kuzma expected to play, I don't really see much from the Wizards I'm interested in. Um, love the matchup for Porzingis, but his minutes have just not been that great. He played 29 minutes against the Knicks, and then he played 26 minutes uh, on, against the Lakers on Saturday. Until Porzingis can play like 30 plus minutes, it's going to be tough to consider him a great option at 7,700. Um, just, you know, we're going to need some more minutes from him. Kuzma at 8K, I love the matchup, but again, like ever since Porzingis has come and, you know, started playing on the team, um, we just haven't seen that massive, massive ceiling from Kuzma. His, his ceiling has definitely gone down since Porzingis has played. So not super high on Kuzma. The rest of the Wizards, I don't really ever play these guys. So yeah, let's move on to the other side of this game with Houston. Now Houston, they are also on a back-to-back -to -back today, but they got blown out by Memphis on Sunday, so I would think that everyone's going to play here. Uh, Christian Wood in the blowout did not play many minutes at all. He only played 21 minutes. I love this matchup, though, for Christian Wood. I mean, the Wizards are a team that you can really beat down low. Um, they've been allowing a ton of fancy points to centers this season. They've, won a, uh, they've been one of the worst defensive teams against centers, so I think it's a great matchup for Christian Wood. I think his upside is definitely there, and we saw him crush in a great matchup on Friday against... Uh, against Indiana, or maybe Thursday that was. Um, I can't remember. Um, might have been Friday, either way. But 70 DraftKings points for him against Indiana. Like, when when Christian Wood gets these good matchups, he we can see him put up, like, massive, massive games. He's had some really big games when the, the matchup's been right. And I think this is a pretty good spot for Christian Wood. So, would not be surprised to see a big game from Christian Wood tonight. He is definitely in play for me. I think Kevin Porter Jr., as long as this game can stay close, he should play 35 to 36 minutes. He only played uh, 27 minutes on Sunday, but again, that was a blowout against Memphis. His minutes were really cut down. Would think he plays like 36 minutes today, and you know the matchup against the Wizards, I do like. Not only have the Wizards been getting killed by centers, but they've just been getting killed all around. I mean, their defense has really fallen off since the beginning of the season. In terms of uh, defensive rating um, on the season, the Wizards are 24th in defensive rating. So really good spot here for these Rockets guys. I think KPJ and Chris Schwarter are my two favorite plays. The rest, of the, or the rest of the Rockets, I'm not super high on. I'm really just kind of looking to those two guys from Houston. So let's move on to the next game, Boston and OKC. Uh, Boston, another team on a back-to-back -to -back today. Um, they did play against Denver on Sunday, and it was a blowout. They blew out Denver. So none of the starters really played their full minutes. Um, so I would think that everyone plays here from Boston. If they do, I mean, it's a really good spot against OKC, but I will mention that, you know, there's a lot of blot risk in this game. Um, SGA is questionable right now, and SGA did not play on Sunday. If SGA winds up sitting for OKC, I mean, the chances of this game blowing out are very, very high. I would definitely be worried about Tatum and Jalen Brown and you know the rest of the starters not playing their full minutes here. But if the game can somehow stay close, I mean, there's plenty of upside for both Tatum and Brown just because OKC's defense is not that great. Um, Tatum has plenty of upside when he gets his full minutes. I don't hate him. I think Brown is playable at this slate is or playable on this slate too. Neither one stand out as priority spin ups, but they're viable. Uh, Robert Williams, I love on the, in this matchup. I mean, I think this is a spot that Robert Williams should dominate. The Thunder have been getting killed by bigs this year. They're another team that just can't defend big men. They allow a ton of rebounds as well. They're a really bad rebounding team. This could definitely be a spot where Robert Williams really dominates on the glass, gets a lot of putbacks, get a lot, gets a lot of offensive boards. He, he can always block a lot of shots as well. Um, and we know SGA likes to drive a lot. If SGA winds up playing today, could see SGA driving a lot to the basket, which you know opens up a lot of block opportunities for Robert Williams. So. I think Robert Williams might be my favorite play from Boston just because the matchup is so good. The price has come down a little bit too. 
if I had to play anyone on this team, it probably would be him. Um, but obviously, you know, Tatum and Jalen Brown are both viable too. The rest of the Celtics, though, I don't think I'm getting to anyone else on this team. And then on the other side with OKC, just a wait and see right now. Um, SGA is questionable. He did not play Sunday. We'll have to keep an eye on this. If SGA plays, he's viable, but it's a really tough matchup against the Celtics. Like, I don't really think I'd be super high on SGA today, even if he does play. If he's out, though... Then we can start to look to the rest of the Thunder guys. So Darius Baisley would get a boost. Trey Mann would get a boost. Poku would get a boost. And then, you know, a guy like Aaron Wiggins would benefit a little bit. Theo Maldon would play a little bit more off the bench. Um, we saw Poku and Trey Mann both play big minutes on um, Sunday against Orlando. But both guys shot the ball god-awful. Poku shot three for fucking 20. Three for 20. I mean, that is just terrible. He still scored almost 30 DraftKings points while shooting three for 20. I mean, if he could have had an even mediocre shooting game, he probably goes for 40 DraftKings points on Sunday. Um, I liked Poku a lot once SGA got ruled out. I think Poku would be a pretty good play today if SGA sits again. I think Poku would play in a blowout too, so I feel pretty good about him regardless. Um, if SGA sits, I think the minutes would definitely be there regardless of if the game blows out or not. So I'm pretty interested in uh, Poku if SGA sits. I think Trey Mann would benefit as well. He took a lot of shots. He took 19 shots on Sunday. He just... He didn't shoot the ball that well. Uh, 5 for 19, 26% from the field. Still scored almost 30 DraftKings points, though, even with you know such a bad shooting game. So like Trey Mann at 5,400, I'd be interested in him if SGA's out. But again, if SGA plays, I think I'm probably just going to full faith this OKC team because they're you know it's definitely blowout risk here. But I think you know if Trey or if uh, if SGA winds up sitting, you might see guys like Trey Mann and Poku still get pretty good minutes even in a blowout because I think both those guys might play in a blowout since they're, you know, young guys that the Thunder are trying to develop right now. Um, a guy like Baisley, though, like Darius Baisley probably wouldn't play in a blowout. Um, don't know about the rest of the the starters and stuff, but I definitely think Poku would. Maybe Trey Mann would play in a blowout, too. Uh, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see with SGA news, because that's going to be really important. Um, that's going to impact my... Or so, that's going to determine most of my interest in this Thunder team. Uh, but let's move on to the last game of the night, the Timberwolves and the Mavericks. So on the Timberwolves today... Another big question mark. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns is currently questionable. This is obviously huge news. If Towns winds up playing, he's a fine option, but I don't think he really stands out on this slate. Obviously, if he's out, though, that's a bump for DeAndre Russell and Anthony Edwards. I think both Russell and Edwards would look like really appealing options if Towns sits. I think Jared Vanderbilt would get a bump up as well. we like Jared Vanderbilt a good amount. And then Naz Reed, if he plays, he's currently questionable, or he's probable, so he should play. Um, if, if Cat gets ruled out, then yeah, Naz Reed's going to be a really, really good value play. We've seen Naz Reed be really productive when given minutes, and obviously, if Cat were to sit, we would expect Naz Reed to start, play around 30 minutes, and at 4,100, he'd just be way too cheap. So, Cat, this Cat news is going to really impact my interest in Minnesota. If he's in, don't love a ton. If he's out, Russell, Edwards, Vanderbilt, Reed, all would be great plays, and I'd have interest in all four of those guys. So, yeah, just going to have to wait and see with the uh, news on Carl Anthony Towns. And then on the other side with Dallas... Don't love much from Dallas today. I think Luka at 12K is always a playable option. The matchup here against Minnesota, I think, is fine. You know, Minnesota has been playing really, really fast this season. Uh, they're actually leading the league in pace on, on the year. And in terms of defensive rating, um, defensively, they've been about middle of the pack, I want to say. Um, they're 11th in defensive rating. And Minnesota does have some good individual defenders, like um, Jared Vanderbilt can defend. Um, I know McDaniels is out right now, but he's a decent defender. Look, Luka can dominate in any matchup. On this slate at 12K, is he someone I'm trying to jam in? I don't think so. But right now, we'll have to wait and see like, you know, what kind of value we get. If we get a lot of value, then yeah, I'm always fine playing Luka if he fits into my build. But right now, there's not much value, so it's really tough to prioritize paying up for Luka. Um, on this Dallas team, though, he's really the only guy I'm interested in. I'm not really looking to anyone else on the maps outside of Luka today, so... That's it for that game, and that's it for all nine games on this Monday slate. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, I appreciate you watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Hit that subscribe button as well if you if you have not yet. And go check out the sponsor of the video, Prize Picks. Go sign up for Prize Picks. Use code NOLA when you do. Get your first deposit match up to $100 when you sign up with my promo code. You can take a look at Prize Picks board for Monday's games. Make some picks for yourself. Um, I will have my Prize Picks video posted sometime on Monday, uh, probably early afternoon. I'll share some picks I like on Prize Picks, and you can tell the picks I give out in my video that I'll post on YouTube later. Um, check that out if you're interested. But again, if you have not yet, sign up for Prize Picks. Use code NOAH. They'll match your first deposit up to $100. Again, appreciate Prize Picks sponsoring all these videos. Huge shout out to them. Get, uh, go over there, sign up and if, if you have not yet. Um, but good luck tonight, guys. I appreciate you watching the video. I hope you did enjoy, and we will see you in the next one. Peace.